Hello everyone, I'm Ji Yongzhu from the Cost Supercomputing Collab. Now I will show you how to run your jobs on Shanghain. Some of the steps you have to follow and several things you have to be aware of. I will use WASP as an example to demonstrate, demonstrate the steps. WASP is a software that is widely used in the area of quantum chemistry, computational physics, and material science. At the end, I will show you some tips. Normally speaking, these are the steps you have to follow. First, log into Shahin, then check if the software is already installed or not. There are several different directories on Shahin. You, you need to know where to run your jobs and where to back up your data. Then prepare the WASP input files and prepare the Slurm uh, job script. Then submit the job. After the job finish, check the output files and do the analysis on your results. To log in Shahin, use the SSH command. SSH, your username, at Shahin HPC cost edu sa. The minus x is the SSH option that is required if you want to open the graphical user interface on Shahin. When you log in Shahin, you need to input two passwords. The first one is the the so one for your Shahin account. The second one is a one-time password, which is a six-digit dynamic password, and you can get it on the free OTP app on your phone. If the login is successful, you will be landed on one of the four login nodes on Shahin. There are three ways to check the code availability. First one is to use the module avail command. If you type module avail on the login node, you will see a full list of the software, compilers, and the libraries available on Shanghai. Especially for from this part of the output, you will see a list of software maintained by the CS team here at the KSL. If you do module avail followed by the name of the software, you will find the information specific for this software. You can also do ls over this folder and you will see the content of the software stack directly. You can also check our website, and you will see this web page that, that is showing all the software available on Shahin. If you can't find the, the software, or you, you cannot find the versions of the software, just send us email at this address, and we will install it for you. Before running the jobs, you have to know some, some information about the working directories on Shanghai. There are three different working directories on Shanghai. The first one is home. Home is the one you will be at just after you log in. It has a very limited space, and it is not mounted on the compute node, which means that you cannot submit any jobs here. The second one is the, your project di directory. It is read-only for the compute node which means that on the compute node, you can read the content of this folder, but you cannot write anything in this folder. This also means that the job submission will also fail. It can be used only for your data backup and the data sharing purpose. <clears throat> the third one is your scratch directory. It has almost unlimited space. You, the most important thing you, you have to know about this uh, scratch directory is that all files older than 60 days will be deleted automatically without any warning. So Scratch directory is the only place you can run your jobs, but you, you please remember to back up important data to your project di directory. Now let's start to run the example. As I just mentioned, the only place you can run your jobs is the Scratch directory. So cd to scratch my username, then create a new folder called wasp and enter this folder. Then copy the wasp example from here to, he to the current directory. There are two types of uh, input files in this example. The first four files are the input files for the wasp itself. In the real calculation, you can prepare your input files in, on your workstation then upload the input file to Shahin by using this command. Or you can prepare the input files by just modifying the existing files. The second 
type of uh, input file is the Slurm drop script. Let's see the content of the Slurm drop script. There are three parts in this file. The first part, the first part is the Slurm directives, which uh, is used, which are used to uh, request resources from the from the system. For example, which partition you are going to use? You are going to use work queue or the 72 hours queue or the debug queue. And how many nodes are you going to use and uh, how much time are you going to, use to, to run your job? The second part of the file is uh, used to set up the environments either by using the export command or by using module load command. The third part of the job script is to run the calculation by using srun followed by the options to the srun command. After the input files are ready, you can use this command sbatch to submit the jobs. After the job submission, you will get ID for this job. If you do sq minus minus me, you will you will see the status of your, your own jobs. You see this job is running. If you want to cancel the job, just find the ID of this job and put it behind the s cancel command. Then the job will be canceled. If you do sq minus, mi minus me, you will see that this job is gone. After the job finish, you can check if, the, if there's anything wrong with this job. You can check the S standard error file and the standard output file to see if, if there's uh, some errors or not. If the job finished successfully, then you can do some post-processing on the results. OK, here are some tips for you. The first one is do not run anything directly on the login nodes. Because as uh, you know, there are only four CDL login nodes, which are shared by hundreds of users. So if you run something on the CDL nodes, other users will be affected. The second one, it won't work if you submit jobs from your home and your project directories. Because home is not seen on the computer nodes, and the project is read only on the computer nodes. And please do remember to backup important data from your scratch to your project or, uh, or home or anywhere else, because all the files in scratch are not backed up and are deleted automatically after 60 days. And there's also a project folder inside uh, scratch, so please do not confuse scratch project and your project because the first one is still considered as a, a scratch directory, and all files will be deleted automatically after 60 days. About the file transfer, if you're working in the Mac or Linux environment, you can use SCP commands to do the file transfer. And if you're working in the Windows environment, you can use some third-party uh, softwares to do the file transfer. OK, thank you very much. If you have any questions or you need any help, just send an email at this address. Thank you very much.